Someone tried to stop you from seeing this practice exam, but an amazing colleague of mine helped me to prevent that situation. So now I'm allowed to show you these skills right here that'll help you pass your Excel exam. So in column A, we've got all the skills we're gonna do in this practice exam, but I first have to give a shout out and a big thank you to the person who made this available, Suzanne Kirkland, who is a teacher that I've never actually met in person, but she reached out to me when someone tried to attack this channel with false copyright claims, and she had my back on that one, and even reached out to YouTube and went the extra mile for me. So thank you, Suzanne. Big part of the reason why I'm able to post practice exams like this one is because I had an amazing teacher friend like her that uh, stepped up and uh, let YouTube know that uh, her students and other teachers like her like these practice exams. So I hope you do too. Here it is. The first skill I'm gonna show you is text alignment. And I'm gonna show you this in three different ways because you could be asked to do this three different ways potentially on your exam. So the first one is we're going to change this header here, the July sales text, and we're gonna merge it across to cell G1 here. So if you have to merge the cells, but you don't want your text to move, because the default is just to click merge and sender and just put it in the center of kind of this range that we're merging, but maybe you're asked to merge the title without actually moving it. So moving the text, the way you would do that is to just, okay, we're gonna highlight this range from column B to G in the first row. And then don't just click merge and center. I know it's tempting to do that, but if the task is gonna ask you to not move the text, uh, the best way to merge the cells without moving the text is to click merge across. And there we go. That way we've merged this area and uh, we didn't move the text on the left side. Now you might just be asked to, you might come up to a question where it's just on the left side and they ask you to change it to right, or it's on the right and you make it the center, middle, that kind of thing. So you could change text alignment that way. The last way I'm gonna show you is maybe you, have to change the text alignment to kind of a counterclockwise or diagonal clockwise, that kind of thing. This is actually one of my favorite Excel features when it comes to text alignment, but it might mess up kind of the dimensions of this worksheet. So this is uh, how you can rotate your text in different ways. So they might ask you to take the headings of this table and then rotate the text. We've got this highlighted. And now if we click this drop arrow, the orientation drop arrow, now you can change it from vertical text and angle let me show you what this looks like. It does kind of look cool if we kind of, yeah, see, it kind of just adds a little visual appeal to our document. It does mess up the skills area here, but I really like that. Just kind of like a good way to grab someone's attention. I, I really like that feature, but you, and you could be asked to do that on your exam, but in this situation, I'm just gonna undo because it doesn't work for us. Okay, the second task is a text function. So that's where we alter text in a certain part of your Excel worksheet. So for example, maybe I want the first three letters as the code for this business type to stand out. So if I wanna do that, maybe I can just get rid of the business type column if we do that and just if we know the code. So the way you create a code or just select only a part of the word, maybe the first two, first three letters would be to type in equal, left, open parentheses, select the text that you want, and this is a table, so it's gonna save us time and copy this formula down for us, which is great. Put a comma, so separate the text that you just highlighted with a comma, and put the number two or three, depending on how many letters at the front of the word you wanna copy over to this new code. So let's say it's three, three of the first letters, and then closing parentheses, press enter. It fills the formula down for us. Now you could be asked to throw in, you might approach a question like this, and you wanna throw in a different text function on top of one that already exists. So maybe we want to uppercase this new text code. The way you would do that, just go to the equal sign, type in upper, and then open parentheses, and then put a closing parentheses because we're not quite done. We have to wrap the new function that we just put in the upper function around the previous left function. So we'll closing parentheses here, press enter, and you can see all of our text in that column immediately becomes capitalized. Okay, so in the amount, column or in this column in our table, we're gonna add some conditional formatting. So you could be asked to a bunch of different types of conditional formatting. So let me introduce you if, you, if you're not familiar with all of the ones that you could potentially be asked. It's right here in our home tab, conditional formatting. Uh, you could use data bars, which is neat, like that. Or more likely, you'll probably get something like an icon set and something with like in this area, the shapes like the traffic lights or something like that. So there's the traffic lights unrimmed, with no kind of border around them. Uh, that's the three signs. Is that a traffic light rim? So they have like an outline around them. One of those, just to uh, point out which numbers were, and I'm gonna do my little trick from last project and just press control shift down 
and then add those traffic lights to all the values in that column. Column, I can't say column today. So conditional formatting, icon sets, and then you might do like a three arrow one or shapes, but you won't have to go beyond that or maybe even the flags one. That could be a cool one, but conditional formatting could get more advanced than this, but most Excel exams, if, just, if you're just doing beginner intermediate ones, it's just this is as far as it goes. So three traffic lights, unrim, there we go. You might also have to change the style of a table, which is just basically the color of the table. So maybe we wanna make it match some kind of theme that we've got going on. Maybe uh, we're gonna change the chart and the table. So we've got a chart over here to a green theme. So to do that, we would just click somewhere inside the table, table design, and maybe we want the uh, something green. So maybe medium style four. Just make sure, try to find wherever the question was asking you to just make sure you can locate the, the group. So if it says medium, it's in this group, and then just find the color column and you'll you'll find it somewhere. So this is, uh, this goes to medium five. So the, the numbers grow from each row here. And yeah, you can see the color. So you got the color, you got the style, and then just the, uh, yeah. Which, which variation is it? So it's the medium, we'll just say it's the medium four. We'll use that one. Now, speaking about color, you could also add some color to your chart. So this, this used to be, on older exams, this used to be more difficult than it is today. So I think a lot of the exam centers are listening to feedback and uh, this, this one might have been confusing in the earlier versions of this exam. It's a lot less complicated now. So I'm gonna get to change the color. So I wanna change this whole theme of this uh, chart here. There's a few ways you can do that, but chart design. And then we wanna change the color to monochromatic palette three. I believe that's also a green, so it's gonna match our table. So color change here. You could add a style. So this is a chart style here. So uh, usually something with like a dark background looks nice, but we're just, if you're just asked to change the color, you can do that here. You can also change the layout, which changes a bunch of things about the chart, but we're just asked to change the color. And if it says something like monochromatic palette three, which is the green one here, um, it used to be confusing in older versions of the exam because it would say row three. And you'd have to be like, well, is it in the colorful one or the, the it, wouldn't, it wouldn't tell you which one it was. So now it just says mo monochromatic palette three. If you hover your mouse over it, it should give you the exact name monochromatic palette three if you were giving that, that color, that exact color on your exam. So we'll choose that one. It looks nice, it matches our table. And there's one last thing I wanna show you about this chart. You can also, there's, you could be asked a bunch of different chart elements. So any chart element is fair game. Uh, if you press this green plus sign on your exam, one of the most, I guess just one that I don't use or maybe use the least out of all of these chart elements is a data table because I think there's enough going on with charts. You don't need to add a table, but you could be asked that on your exam to display a data table without legend keys. So the way you would do that, just click data tables and then make sure it's the one with no legend keys. Okay, because maybe that's too much going on um, to have legend keys, but we want to just a summary table under our chart here. So no legend keys, we'll click on that. Click outside, there's our data table within our chart, and that's how you would insert that chart element. I upload practice exams like this one every Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but if you missed the first few, they're on your screen. You can check those out. I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.